For us at the BAA, since the attacks, the attack on Boston on April 15th, uh, it has, of course, been a, a, a stressful time, but also a very busy one as we look to try to meet and serve the needs of the runners who came on that day to run, the volunteers who performed so superbly that day, and all of the other people who were affected by what happened that day. What has helped us immensely has been the outpouring of support that we have received from people here in Boston, from people around the United States, from people internationally. This was an attack on Boston, and the people of Boston have risen up magnificently. Their support has been of great value to us, but also people from everywhere else, including the running world. This little running community of ours around the world is a very, very strong and good one. Dave, what um, have you been working on with your team over the last two weeks? Sometimes, um, in order to cope with a tragedy, the best thing to do is to keep busy. And the best way to keep busy is to focus on those who you can help, not to focus on yourself. And that's pretty much what the team has been doing. Um, just as Tom indicated, um, the response from the running community worldwide has been quite overwhelming, um, a phenomenon, if you will. And staying on top of that, helping them help us has been a priority. Of course, when something like this occurs, there are so many thoughts and ideas and suggestions that come from the community at large. So certainly we've been the recipient of a lot of very uh, generous thoughts and ideas and recommendations. At the same time, we understand the complexities and the dynamics of, of doing anything. Um, the first thing we have to do is work with our partner, in particular the city of Boston, in trying to determine what, if anything, we might be able to do in a celebration way with those who weren't able to cross the finish line. So we're working on that right now, and hopefully sooner than later we'll come up with some sort of plan as to how to, um, how to address the fact that they weren't able to um, experience the euphoria of going up Hereford Street and down Boylston Street and crossing the actual finish line itself. One large group that was powerfully affected by all of this were the 5,700 people who were denied the opportunity to cross the finish line on Boylston Street, uh, which is one of the great experiences for those of us who have run marathons, first to earn the right to get to the starting line and then to cross that finish line. Uh, we are now addressing the needs of those people the best that we can. Uh, we uh, have either sent to them or we are now in the process of sending to all of them finishers medals uh, to recognize the fact that they were part of this event and through no fault of their own did not get across that finish line. And we are listening to them as we consider how we address timing matters for them. Uh, we have received a great many suggestions from people as to what they would like to have happen. At one end of the spectrum, there are people who would like to have a time extrapolated from their the, the last 5K measurement that we have. At the other end of the spectrum, there are people who say, I didn't cross that finish line and I don't want to receive something that suggests that I did. Uh, so as we listen to all of those people, we will stay in communication with them uh, and try to come to a result that is the fairest for all of them. As we get down to the last issue of people possibly having a chance to run over that Boylston Street finish line, we need to communicate with our colleagues in the city of Boston to see what they want to do, and we are doing that. There are a great many people right now who quite rightly are interested in what sort of timeline we have for addressing the future. Uh, and the first observation I would make is one that uh, Dave has made uh, as well, which is that our focus has entirely been on meeting the needs of everyone involved in 2013, especially for us, our runners, 
and those very brave, magnificent volunteers who performed so heroically. And not just the ones who were out on the street that we couldn't see, but the, the whole group, all 8,500, uh, displayed a, a spirit that led to the performance and the behavior that we saw that day. As we get through that process, which now is focused largely on counseling for the volunteers, we want to make sure that they have access to the counseling resources that all of us need in the face of a tragedy such as this one, just as public safety officials and military people are required to undergo counseling when they are involved in tragic events. We want to make sure that that same sort of counseling is available to our volunteers. We have held several public or several group meetings for them and made other counseling resources available. The City of Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts are also collaborating now to continue the provision of those resources to people. As we look forward, we need to work with all of those constituencies that are our partners in putting on the Boston Marathon every year, the eight cities and towns from Hopkinton into Boston, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the many agencies that are involved in producing the marathon each year. So we will work with them as promptly as we can to craft a plan going forward from here. As far as looking forward to 2014, um, the first thing we would ask of anyone who might be interested in running, <clears throat> volunteering, or participating at any level is just to be a little patient while we sort through all of this. Um, I think on the outside looking in, sometimes the the complexity doesn't seem as significant in terms of pulling off an event of this magnitude. Um, we have to first reach out to our partners, the cities, the towns, in particular the anchor um, communities. Hopkinton, Boston. We have to meet with them. We have to solicit their input. And um, even to the point where they hold the cards, I mean, they're going to tell us in large part what we can or can't do. So we don't want to be premature and make commitments and give people the impression certain things are going to happen and then two, three months down the road have to disappoint them and say, oh, wait a minute, um, we misspoke. So it's going to take some time. We understand the level of interest. We understand people's desires to honor the victims and, and to acknowledge um, you know, the bravery of so many people. And as a result, they want to run the 26.2 um, next year. Um, it would be wonderful if we could accommodate everybody but again there are things that need to be discussed and decided before we can make any kind of statement or commitment as to what 2014 will ultimately look like. We along with everyone else have listened to the President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States and many others say that the Boston Marathon will be back on the third Monday in April in 2014 and we have heard them say that it will be bigger and better than ever. We don't ignore the President of the United States or any of these other elected, offic uh, elected officials. But what bigger and better may turn out to mean is something that we will work on with a great many elected officials and members of their administrations going forward. Uh, for us, ever since the tragedy of April 15th, uh, our community here in Boston, and it was Boston, that was attacked has risen up as one to say that, it, that our community will not be intimidated, will not be stopped by what happened. Uh, that has fueled much of what we have all heard about a bigger, better Boston Marathon in 2018 is an expression of the fact that people will not give up, will not give in. We have received expressions of support of all kinds in the office from individuals, from organizations, particularly in our running community, uh, and we receive it from all of our government partners 
at all levels who continue to come back to us and say, we're with you, bigger and better than ever. Uh, and another community that has been uniform, unanimous in its support, has been our sponsors, uh, who are the people that enable so much of what we do. Uh, without those sponsors, it would be very hard for us to do much of what the BAA is able to do in the marathon or in anything else. Uh, they are our partners. They provide goods and services and funds, but they also provide just human support. And in the wake of the tragedy of April 15th, they have provided emotional support as well as all those other types of support that one normally thinks of as coming from sponsors. Our principal sponsor, John Hancock, uh, has been with us every day. They have sent volunteers to our office to help staff as we have received so many communications on so many fronts. Our partners at Adidas have produced a t-shirt that has raised at least a million dollars already for the one fund. Uh, and they are in touch with us every day. And the same is true of all of our sponsors. All they want to know from us is what they can do to help. One area of support that I don't want to lose sight of is the support of our own people. We have to remember that they were coming off of an extraordinary year last year <clears throat> with the heat um, and how that challenged all of us in terms of the number of casualties and um, what had to be done to keep all those participants and volunteers safe. So we spent the better part of uh, 12 months just thinking about weather-related challenges going forward and how we would deal with them if they reared their ugly head again. And then back to back with this tragedy. So when you look at who you have around you as a team, we myself, Tom, the staff, we are so fortunate to have the level of commitment, dedication, and in particular experience uh, of our organizing committee, our volunteers, our staff. Um, they're, the, they're also the heroes in this equation. Um, years and years and years of experience really was the the reason why um, more tragedy didn't occur. These people not just put on a road race, and I might add a pretty good road race this year that got a little lost, uh, but they, they saved lives. They pr prevented further injury and further loss, and for that we will be forever grateful for our own people. The Board of Governors for the BAA, in looking back at the horrors of April 15th and an expression of sympathy for the victims of that attack, those who died, those who have been disabled, those who have been hurt physically, and those who have been affected emotionally. And as well, in honor of our volunteers, performed so nobly in so many ways, some seen, some not seen, d decided to and has just made a donation to the One Fund Boston in the amount of $250,000 as an expression of that respect for all of those people. Right now there are no plans to change things that have already been set in place such as registration. The plan would be to open registration in September as we have scheduled it. That being said, over the course of the next month or so, we're not sure what's going to be the eventuality of where this is all heading. But right now, um, registration will continue as planned. Well, right now we know that there are a great many people who want to run the Boston Marathon in 2014. It is part of the profound reaction that we have seen here in Boston and elsewhere from people who say they will not give in to terror. Uh, and 
know from any of them, uh, an expression of that is, is the statement that they want to run next year. The best we can say to them right now is we are working closely with those same government officials who have helped to inspire that emotion to determine exactly what the 2014 Boston Marathon will look like. It, uh, the marathon is a collaboration every year among us and many, many public partners, uh, and we will work with them as we all listen to the community of runners in trying to fashion the best approach we can for what will be a very, very special 